So I sort of resorted to what I didn't want to resort to, and that was blowing all the chips out with the air compressor, the air hose. I sort of wanted to get as much as I could out with the vacuum and with the brush. This brush really sucks though. And now I'm just gonna sort of wipe everything off and put some more WD-40 on it, then we'll level it. So we got a machinist level and I have this thing set way in the back in the center of the travel of the bed. It looks like it's off because you have the tool tray right there, but it's in the center of the travel. So there's the bubble right there as you can see it. So we're off a little bit. Now according to Tormach, when you have it set like this all the way in the back, that means you have to level the feet. So I'm going to go ahead and level the feet until that thing reads zero right in the middle. We're going to call that good right now. I know it's a, just one tick mark off this way, but it's really hard and you can't really go by this little guy right here because it's hard to tell. So I flipped it this way, got it centered up with this. Once it stops moving, it looks like it's fairly in the middle. So fairly in the middle both ways, we're going to call it good at that. Now as I bring this whole thing forward towards me, then this bubble might move just a little bit and if it does then that means there's a twist in the casting as far as I understand it so that means I have to loosen loosen that bolt right there well depending on what it is but that bolt there's four of those bolts all the way around and either shim it or something so we moved it forward and you can see the bubble start like right there so it's it needs to come up on this side, it needs to come up over here. It needs to come up on this side, or down on this side. So obviously we'd have to add shims to this. So I finally got my shims. And this is sort of what they look like. There's a 10 thousandths shim right there. I'm going to use a 5 thousandths shim to shim up this front right side over here. The bubble goes over, but not as much as it did. So I'm gonna add another two thousandths. And so basically I'm going to put a four thousandths shim in. So I was trying to figure out why this thing was getting unlevel as we brought the whole bed forward. So I figured it could be the gibbs or the jibs or whatever you wanna call them. So that is this bolt right there. So that this is actually the bolt that keeps this whole wedged piece in there and there's one on the other side on this side over here it looks exactly the same way but it actually tightens it brings in that tapered piece a little bit closer to the dovetail of the bed here as far as I know I'm no expert on this I'm just trying to figure it out as I go here so tighten that up on this x-axis here and then tighten the one up on the y-axis here it's somewhere you can see it right down in there and then there's one on the other side as well, actually. It's in that hole right there. So that's what tightens it down. So tighten those down a little bit and it seemed to be a little bit better. Two and a half thousands for the whole travel from here to here. Two and a half thousands. But I can tell when I move the table, I mean, that's a whole thousandths right there. I can move the table a whole thousandths this way. It's a little bit less, it's closer to five, just under one thousandths. As I go to tighten these gibs up, or jibs, this, it pulls that taper in closer to that dovetail. Now I don't want to pull that taper in so close to the dovetail that it seizes up the motor. So it can do that. We can bring this in so tight that the motor cannot physically pull and push the bed of this table in the x-axis. So 
So after tightening up the Gibbs, I found out I eliminated most of this travel here, this the twisting motion with those Gibbs with the mainly the the Y axis. The whole so the X axis here sets on top of the saddle that moves the Y axis and the Y axis was giving us much more trouble than anything else. So I went up and tightened those Gibbs. So how the Gibbs work, the one in the front as you tighten it those Gibbs are tapered so I'm not 100% sure but as you tighten the one it tightens that taper up into the dovetail of the Y axis. And so when you loosen this one and tighten this one, that pushes that taper into it and that would give it a tighter fit, essentially. So that's what I ended up doing and I gave it as tight a fit as I could without interfering with the lubrication and all that stuff. Because you don't want it so tight that oil can't get there. Same thing with the bearings in your engine. There is there's a little bit of clearance there so oil can get into those bearings of, of the crankshaft of your engine of your car that you drive every single day. So I assume it's the same thing here. Adjusting the Z-axis Gibbs are the last thing that I'm going to do for leveling this machine and then we will be finished with that for now. I don't know how often I should check all the leveling. How often should I check it? How often should I put the machinist level at the back of the table and make sure everything is level? I don't know, but this is the last thing I'm gonna do. That bolt right there in front of my hand, right there, that adjusts the Z-axis Gibbs, jibs. And we're going to tighten one and loosen the other to bring that taper of the gib down into the dovetail of the Z-axis head. And that should tighten things up, because right now, what's happening is this thing is leaning since those are loose it allows the head to tilt one way or the other so as of now the head is tilted sort of like this more this way and that's because when we were reading the dial indicator once we had it in the spindle when the dial indicator was over here rather than over here it was reading higher it was the indicator was being pushed up more yeah so that's how that works so we're going to straighten things out a little bit so after some trial and error of loosening this bolt, tightening this bolt up here, and getting that aligned, I think I got this where I wanted it to be. All I did to test was put this dial indicator in this 3 8 collet and moved it around till I got it to where I wanted it. And so Tormach says you need a swing arm that goes basically a 6 inch diameter around the table. Well, I didn't have that, nor did I really want to buy one at this point. So I figured this would suffice, and it seems to be fairly accurate. I mean, I have it in a collet, and it can, it'll can it display if this table is out of whack. So I got it to where I wanted, and there we have it. That was the last thing that I needed to do to give my brain a rest and give myself a little reassurance and confidence that this thing is where I want it to be. So this was fairly a boring video and I apologize for that. And that's it. We got this sucker leveled and I think we'll be alright from here. I'll put the I'll put the fixture plate back on and we'll be ready to rock again. So I had a little bit of a problem with the humidity in here. And so it's been really cold in Ohio. One day it decided to get really warm. It went from like 30 degrees to 60 degrees. So everything in here is naturally cold. Everything in the shop is naturally cold. When it heated up so fast, then everything started getting all damp in here. And there was a little bit of condensation that formed on here and it raised up. These little circles were from the fixture plate that I have and these raised up. The rust on these, like it just came out, came alive. And I ended up, I bought a stone and sort of went back and forth and stoned all those down. However, do any of you have any tips or tricks to keep your garage or shop, whatever, from getting too humid or basically condensing? I brought a fan in here and the fan helped a little bit and it got, sort of just got the air moving. I guess there was a lot of stagnant air. I'm actually trying to work on plumbing. It's a little bit of a background. <clears throat> My house, or the house that we are living in now, we are renting, 
and it is solely heated by a wood stove and I mean it does have propane but it's solely heated by the wood stove because we don't want to pay for the propane and the wood is free so wood stove and I want to be able to sort of pump some of that heat into the garage this is an attached garage and it's a split level home and literally the stove is on the other side of the wall and I want to be able to pump that in here somehow and I assume that would help I'm not sure but having the fan on in here and maybe having a dehumidifier would help but if you guys have any other tips or tricks leave a comment below to help me out but at any rate I think that's it for now so thanks for watching